if we reflect on what we did for Mona, all the pieces in there is actually like a good microcosm or catalog of how we think about material process and concept. Mona gave us a lot of information. It was just kind of our due diligence to synthesize that into something that again spoke to her personally and also provided her kind of branding mission of rebranding your typical dental office. I was tired of hearing for years that, you know, I hate going to the dentist, I hate going to the dentist, and I wanted to create an environment where people love to come and see us, because <laughs> we are about wellness and care, it's not just about, you know, root canals and drilling. But I had essentially a blank slate, a white canvas, to build and design my dream office. If you were able to create an environment that you were proud of and that you could provide the best care for your patients and make them feel comfortable, what would it look like? The thoughts came to my head, I wanted to create it like an art gallery and I wanted our patients to know me and get to know me through our, our design selections and not just know me based on the clinical dentistry that we do. Whenever we are working with a client to understand what they're about, we built that into the conceptual thinking of the piece so that in their space, it's not only um, elevating their space, but it's elevating their brand. We were at a point where I was up at night on my computer Googling unique light installations, unique art pieces. I was, I was just looking for ideas to outfit my practice. And I'd never, it never come across my mind to find a company like Design Fugitives and tell your stories and have custom pieces made. The themes that, that really came to the surface were her family history and the use of really cutting edge technology in her dental practice. One of the crown iconic pieces of the building is the topi cloud. Our grandfathers would wear these white hats and they're called topis. While my husband and I didn't really know our grandparents very well because they lived in India and we grew up here, the images that we have of our childhood of, of them was our grandfathers wearing those white hats. So Topi Cloud uh, was all about honoring ancestry, but honoring it not in just like a family portrait way, abstracting it and using crazy technology to actually do it. We took the silhouette of that hat and created a piece that describes family heritage, one generation passing things on to the next. I said, what better way to show tribute and let them know it's on their shoulders that we stand to be able to pursue our dreams and create better lives for our children. I wanted a statement piece in the clinical operatory, but I wanted something that wouldn't take over from the true star of that room, which is the treatment center, which is where the hub of my digital equipment is, where I do the, all my clinical procedures, and, and it's very technology driven and integrated. So we had to do something that was impactful but subdued. So how do you do both of those? And Because of the medical setting, a lot of things are white in there, so we were looking to add like a bunch of color to each of the room. Instead of having the material do everything, the light that comes in through her west-facing windows where most of her operating rooms are, just gets bent by the formed acrylic and starts casting just these beautiful shadows. I had no idea what an integral role those colors play today in our workflows. So we have room numbers, but we reference them now as the red room, the orange room, the blue room, the green room, and we have color coordinated our, our instruments and our materials bins that get stocked in those rooms based essentially on those room colors. And then she has two pieces behind her desk that are the most personal for her because they are the fingerprints of her two daughters. When we were talking about what artwork to put up in this office, I was joking around saying, well, I have two girls. They're going to fingerprint up everything in this place anyway, so we don't need to do anything fancy. And from that, it just the light bulbs went off with Paul and Tuan, and they came up with these fun ideas of why not do their DNA and why not do their fingerprints. We, we just milled into foamed PVC panels that we laminated together. That's just like 
such a common material and people don't see it as like beautiful or worth much in its own right. We knew that the, this material had more that could be done with it than the way it was traditionally approached. At least once or twice a week for the past three years, I'm reminded by my patients uh, how thankful they are. They tell me how thankful they are, how much better they feel, or how much easier it was to come into here based on the, the design aesthetic that we picked for the office. So I didn't have that foresight coming into this project. I just wanted beautiful things on my walls to tell our stories. And the best side effect that's come out of it Three years later, a few times a week, I'm hearing from patients that because of this environment that we created, they were they made it through that procedure a lot better. I mean, I think this word is overused uh, and kind of is a cliche now, but bespoke. But I think we really are bespoke because everything we make is for that person, for that client, and uh, is as much as possible. Uh, something that came from their own story, their own brand, their own needs. Um, and then they brought us in to give it a material, artful reality.